Hey guys, Rocky Joe here, and I know you always hear about people's success stories, but I feel like I learn the most when I hear about their trials and tribulations and mistakes. So I put together this video to be able to talk about the five worst mistakes that filmmakers can make. Now, some of these sins I unfortunately have committed in my career and I have stories to be able to share about them, but you on the other hand, you are smart and sharp and everything in between. And that's why I know you know the smartest thing to do right now is to smash that like button and that subscribe button because it helps this video reach the filmmakers that really need it. And as a thank you, here's a picture of a camera on a gimbal, which is just Beautiful. If you're new to this channel, my name is Rocky Joe and I am a video director and a content producer. And if you want to find out more about me, my vids, content, ads, even movies that I've done, check out this link in the upper left hand corner. Now standard disclaimer guys, remember this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not here to offer advice of any kind. These are just my personal opinions from my own experiences. Please make sure to always do your own research because you'll probably learn things that even I'm still trying to learn. And that's the beauty of it. So with that said, Let's jam. Now these following five are in no particular order, so they are all equally stupid to commit. Number one, filming without a script. Now before you tell me, Rocky Joe, I am an artiste. You cannot contain me on the paper. I'm using these words and stuff to be able to express myself. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Just, just hear me out, okay? Yes, there are amazing and brilliant artists out there who can go and film things without a script. I'm looking at you, Juan Car Y. And yes, there are huge blockbusters who started filming without a final lock script. I'm looking at you, Iron Man and Edge of Tomorrow. But these films all had something that typically we don't have, which is A, they have money, B, they have stars that are willing to commit to the time, and then three, they have studios to support them. And unless you have all three things, one of the best things you can do for your own production is to make sure you have a finalized, locked script. Because that way is you and all your department heads or all your teammates can break down all the key areas so you're ready for the shoot. Imagine having 10 or 20 or even 50 department heads all coming to you all at once at the same time, asking you a bunch of questions and you don't have answers for any of them. Like it, it would be absolute chaos and you would lose, even if it's just like a minute a question, if you have like 20 questions, you've lost 20 minutes and that could have been a shot right there. So that's why it's so important to be able to have a finished and locked script. That way you can focus on the battles that happen on the day of shooting. Number two, always do action safely. Guys, I love action. I grew up on Jackie Chan action films. I even worked with one of his action choreographer on one of my films. I know how awesome action and gunkata and car drifting and shootouts and all of this stuff is. But if you're gonna do it, you have to, have to, have to do it right because stunts are dangerous. There is no worse feeling in the world than having one of your stuntmen injured, let alone your star injured on set. This can instantly halt production. In fact, on my second feature, I remember we had a wire scene during a fight where the stuntman had to do a twirl before he crashed to the ground. And we rehearsed that scene over and over and over again. And when we shot it, it still snapped and it wound up sending the stuntman to the hospital. That was not a fun day. You gotta remember, when it comes to action, it's the illusion that these people are fighting or that they're in a shootout or they're falling or whatevering. And it's so important that you hire professionals to be able to help you coordinate everything so that it's done as safe as possible. Number three, okay, something that is not as heavy but still pretty serious is not feeding your crew. Yes, I know this sounds ridiculous that you would never feed your crew, but look, unless you're working with all your buddies and your cousin Charlie who's okay with not eating anything, don't skip out on lunch. Guys, in this industry, you're gonna be working with more and more pros as you continue to grow and become awesome. And whether it's union or non-union or overseas, it's really important for you just to be aware of what they're used to when it comes to lunch and also breaks. Now, yes, sometimes you can call grace in order to get your shot because you really need it, but by not feeding your crew, that is an unspoken sin. And it is one of the quickest ways to get yourself blacklisted in this industry. And remember guys, the industry is not that big. Number four, biting off more than you can chew. Another way to say this is you're taking on more roles than you can really handle. I'm guilty of this myself. I remember back in college, I went out to shoot this short film that was a parody of one of my favorite films, Run Lola Run. Go watch it, it's spectacular. So I gathered my acting friends and also borrowed a camera and we went out and shot this really fun film. The problem, I didn't know how to edit, I didn't know how to color, and I didn't know how to do sound. So I had all this footage, but I couldn't finish it. Before you knew it, months passed by and I had nothing to show for it. So filmies, if you don't have the skills yet to be able to edit or write or camera op or whatever, like be realistic with yourself. Find other people to be able to collaborate with so that you can get your film finished. Don't be like me and make this mistake and wind up having a film die in the can. Number five, 
treating people like crap. Guys, I get it that when you're on set, there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of pressure going on. You're always racing against time and you're always running out of resources, but you gotta remember to maintain your cool and communicate clearly. Sure, you can be one of those filmmakers who just yells at people and is never happy and just makes them feel horrible. But in the end, all that's gonna do is make them not wanna be there. <laughs> in fact, they're probably gonna hate being there. And if it's not for the money, they're probably gonna skip working with you next time. Instead, look up to the filmmakers out there who are great at what they do and are still really professional on set, shout out to you guys. So instead of stressing out and creating a toxic environment, try to learn how to create a healthy environment, which means learning how to communicate well. Now don't get me wrong guys, I have had arguments on set. In fact, in very rare occasions, I've even had to yell at people. But if you ever do, please do it behind closed doors in private. Don't do it out in the open where everybody's watching, where it's embarrassing and they're filming with their iPhones and they put it on YouTube because that will haunt you for like the next 20 years of your life. So there you go guys, that's the five worst filmmaking mistakes that you can make. Did I miss anything? Is there anything that you've experienced that you wanna share? Tell me, I wanna know so that we can all learn and keep growing together. So thank you guys again for watching. Remember to like, subscribe and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. So oh.